Hi, it's George with Phone Fly. Today we're going to tie a deer hair bass plug. What I've got here is uh, some black thread. I've got a black hook. It's actually a Mustad Standard 2XL. Nice big hook. Okay, I'm going to be using some pink and white silicone legs. I also have a piece of sinking line. I'm going to be tying in for the weed guard. Okay, and I'm going to be using some marabou as some green. You can use green, black, whatever color you like for the patterns. I'm going to be using some brown and black feathers. So, so some brown and black hackle. And then for the deer, I'm going to be using some 3D eyes. And then I'm also going to be using some deer hair. Now the deer hair for the pattern, I'm going to be doing red, white, green. So I'll be looking at the pattern like this. Okay, and what I want to do first is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie in the I'm going to tie in the weed guard. So what you want to do here is you want to put as little bit of material as you can through most of the hook here that we're going to be doing the deer hair. So we want to go back to about here and the bend where the tail is going to be. We're going to tie in some thread. And we're going to go about a little less than halfway down. Okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead next is we're going to grab the, the line and we're going to go right to, go right in front of it a little bit because you can pull it back. Okay, nice loose wrap then tight wrap over the top. You want to keep, you want to keep the line on top, on top of the hook shank or actually going to be following the gap. All the way down. You want to at least go maybe halfway so it can follow the bend, keeping it on top. Okay, and then you're going to wrap it right back again. And before you get to the end, trim it. Now I usually like to trim it on a 45. Okay, so what you want to do here is I'm going to get the line out of the way. Okay, I'm going to pop this off, put the line in the vise. Get my length on there, so I'm going to go a little bit longer than that, so I'm going to go about to, about to here. Now later on when we tie this in, it's really important that we don't pull this tight. We just keep it nice and loose. Right about here, but we'll go over that again later. Now this, we're going to take this out. Now what I do is just kind of put it out of the way. So when I turn it, it's not going to bother it. Okay, so now what we want to do from this point back is we're going to want to keep all the materials that we're going to be putting on for the tail. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some marabou. Nice, nice piece of it. Take all the excess off. And from here, I want to go ahead and trim this. What I like to do is I'll feel till where I feel like this, where I feel the, the spine or the stem where it starts to get stiff. Take it back. Again, a little bit of an angle. Pull anything out. I'm going to go right about to here. So I want to balance it on here a little bit. I don't want it, I don't want to put it way out. I want to have it balanced on the hook. So right about there. And again, keeping it on top, loose wrap, drop, drop, wrap it in. 
Okay, I'm going to trim this back. Head back and tie it. Up. Get in there nice and tight. Pick it up. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my pink legs. Now, so these are the nice long ones. Okay, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in half. So it's in half. I'm going to go underneath the hook and I'm going to pick up the thread with it. All right, and I got it tied in right here, right where the, uh, right where I put the weed guard. And what I'm going to do is right, I'm going to tie Okay, we're going to tie this in, make sure it's even. So let me get this right here. Sometimes it messes you up when you're explaining it and you just do it. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna cut, we're gonna split this in half. Okay, we're gonna put it on top of the, the weed. We're gonna give it one or two, we're gonna give it one or two wraps to hold it in place on top. Okay, once we got it in place, you're going to split them. So two are going to one side, two are going to the other. So what I do, what I like to do is take them, pull them on the side like this. So I'm holding two on each side. Just like that. And then tie them in. And get it in there good. Always wrap it a little bit on here. And tie it in there nice. There we go. I'm going to take this, cut these off here. So basically I have four. Grab all four of them real quick. Sometimes you want to trim these as you go because we're going to get a nice bulky mess of material on here. So I want to pick them all up. Go about a little bit past the marabou. Right there. Okay. Okay, let's take this back here. Now, next thing we're going to do is go toward the back again. We're going to take off right at the very end. We're going to take two brown feathers. So, what you want to do with the two brown feathers, so what you want to do with the two brown feathers is you want to pick two of them off at the same time so they're the same size feather. So, I got two right about here down toward the bottom, hack them off. So I got two nice ones right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean these off. Let's get this out of the way. So I'm going to pinch right here. Get them off nice and clean. it back. Okay, we leave this one right here. Make sure it's same size. Okay. One of the things you want to do here, and you really want to be careful of this, is first off, you're going to make sure that they're doing the V out, just like that. But you don't want it so they're sticking way out. So what you do is, what I do is I push them along the side and I grab them in. I'm actually going to take some of the feather and hold it down. And I'm going to tie it in and go back a little bit. Because what I'm doing is I don't really want this feather to go shooting out a country mile on each side. But I want it kind of like that. So if it's looking like, like this, back tie it a little bit so it goes into there. Okay, and then the next thing we do is I'm going to trim this out. Now again, we're keeping all as much material as we can off this hook. Off this shaft. We need this as clean as we can keep it.
There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of Sally Hansen. You can use resin if you like. I like Sally Hansen because it's going to keep it nice and tight. It's going to get it, you know, dry in there. Sometimes the resin can crack a little. Okay, and while that's drying, we need to grab a couple nice black feathers. So we need some, some with a lot of hack on. So I'm taking my feathers here, just like before. I'm going to take two of them off at the same time. I want at least two for the wrap. So, and I want to stay two pretty close ones. Pull them off toward the bottom. Okay. okay, now I'm going to take these two and trim. trim off this. It's almost like I'm treating it like one feather. Okay, now I'm going to want to tie in. So grabbing it on the end here, just going to pinch it back a little bit. Really careful about the tear the feather just to give me something to tie in. So it gives you two tabs to tie in. Right. And what, I sh what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these two feathers. I want them, what I do is I want them wrapped the same way. So the arch is the same way on a feather. And when I wrap, I want the arch to be going toward the back. So when we're looking at it, I want the arch to be going so everything's going this way. So we get these on top of each other. Get them nice and close. Okay, so we want the arch to be going this way, so we're going to tie them in right here. And again, we're gonna tie it back to the front. Just right on top. Okay, just like wrapping in a feather. Let me get this out of the way. We're gonna grab our heckle pliers. And I'm gonna grab these two tips. I wanna pull the feather so it's right on top of the other one. We have my two stems right here. Pull them at the same time. You want them to make sure they go at the same time. So you're trying to pull them nice and even and grab them on there. Okay. So now from here, be careful of the, the hook. I'm going wrapping them nice and slow. Nice and easy tension on here. Working my way forward, not overlapping, laying the spine right next to the previous. It's a lot of feather to work with. I'm gonna go right to the end of where I was tying. Okay, pull the thread back. I'm gonna go catch it in between the pliers, or in between the hackle pliers and the last wrap. Give it three or four good wraps. With this fly, it's all about durability. So it's it's getting all the material in the right place, but getting it wrapped in tight enough where it doesn't fall apart. So what we got is right there. Now I'm gonna pull this all back. Okay. 
and tie it in there nice and tight. Put this all back and I'm going to trim this stuff off. Careful not to cut the thread. Now I've actually seen some people uh, whip finish this off right here and uh, switch over and do the next part with wire to tough it off. And that's fine too. Uh, you can use anything, wire, Kevlar thread, just anything in there that'll keep it from the bass teeth from ripping through them. I'm putting a little more Sally Hansen on this just to hold it, give it a little more strength. Uh, yeah, so you can stop here, use wire if you want to wrap the next part. Just do the uh, do the deer hair. You can use deer hair. You can use wire. Use whatever you like for this. I'm just using the thread. All I ever really use is the thread anyway. But what you next thing you want to do is you want to take a piece of tape. Make sure you catch all the material. And I like to call it the dog cone. Don't tie the tape in. All you're doing is just getting it. So we're doing the dare hair. We don't get it caught on there. It's keeping all this material to the back. Okay, so for the deer hair. Okay, so what I'm gonna be using for the, I'm gonna also be using a pen. I went ahead and pulled out the ink and pulled out the pen tip on here so I can use it to push back. If you have a deer hair tool, that's great. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna be picking one up soon because I've, I've watched some videos, I really like them. But for now, I'm just using this, it's fine. Okay, so you want to do this nice and slow. What I'm doing is I'm taking about enough up, about as thick as a straw, going right to the base. Pulling off any extras, making sure I'm about even. Just set it on top of here, loose wrap, and when I pull it tight, it's going to start to spin around, just like that. So then what I'll do is I'll take the pen, push back nice and tight, a couple wraps forward, do the same thing again. The thing with this is you want to get this as tight as possible with the hairs next to each other. But you don't want to take off so many hairs that it's just stuff's flying all over the place. So, you know, just work with a small amount of hairs to start with. Try and keep them as even as you can. Push it back. Stay even. Lice loose wrap over the top and then pull down and they'll turn. They turn just like that. Bring the thread forward again and just keep doing the same thing. Take out any loose threads, pinching it nice and flat. Get too much in there. So. Pulling it back over here, and around, and we'll spin around a nice circle. To push back nice and tight, and tie it up. You can feel it when you're pushing it back. You can feel it adjust. You can feel it push right tight up to the previous one. Each backing is holding, each time you put it in there, it's pushing it tight, it's pushing it against the, where you tied in the, the guard and all that other materials, keeping it from going too far back. Which is why we're keeping all the material off the hook. 
If we were to go ahead and you'll see toward the end when I tie this in and we do the last one, when we do the last bit of deher, the last bit of deher is actually going to go over some thread. And you can see how that one actually is harder to do because it's, there's material underneath it. But we want to keep going until we're about a third of the way down the hook. Always make sure we're nice and even. And what you do is once you see it ball up like that, you give it one or two wraps, and if it turns on the shaft, that's what you're doing. That's what you're looking for, is that little, that little turn to ball it up. And the whole thing with this is just be patient. There's a lot of deer hair videos out there. The more you practice with this, definitely the better you'll get at it. It just uses a lot of material, but this is a big fly. And the truth is this fly, when it's done right, the fibers, the way they catch in the water is so much better than any kind of wood or plastic popper because of the way it acts in the water. So you fish this with a bigger pole, just give it nice good action on the top and it's a great popper. And what I do is I make four or five different colors of these and I have them with me all the time. Once it gets beat up enough, I retire them. I retire them, retie them. There we go. Okay, so now we're done with the green. Now before I finish it off, the next thing I wanna do, and the hardest part about tying this bug is this part right here is I'm gonna tie in the white legs, right? Now it's not hard to tie these in, but when you trim them, it's way too easy to cut these things. And I'd say nine times out of 10, I end up cutting them. So I wanted to, you know, so we're gonna to have to be really careful on this between trimming because of the weed guard and between trimming because of the, these legs. You really test your patience on these, but all I'm doing is tying them in a knot. That's it, nothing special. Other than anything, just tie them in a knot on each side, half hitch, pushing them back. Okay, so they're back here. And then just getting them out of the way. Just put them back here, get them out of the way. Let's tie in one more small group of green. Okay, so let's get this in. Same exact thing as we've been doing. Okay, so we're done with the green. So just like the green, nothing's changing. Grab a small group of the white. Find out where it's even. Take off the dead or the not the dead, but the loose ones. Pull the spark back as you can. Make sure it's all nice and round on there. Okay, so do some more.
Okay, so we're just moving right along. Again, not doing too much at once. Trying to keep them as even as I can, but we're gonna be trimming this a lot, so. If we don't get it perfect, it's okay. Couple more wraps. Looks like maybe one or two more wraps for the white. And then we'll move to red. Now, of course, if you don't want to tie it in with the weed guard, you don't have to. Or this weed guard, whether you're tying a Klaus or Minnow or you're doing just about any other pattern you want with a weed guard, you can do the same exact thing. I tie a lot of my frog patterns with them, especially for the small mouth, which is what I'm getting ready for right now. Is the season to open up? I got a nice special place where we go after a large mouth and a nice place in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where we go after the small. We try that before I head up for fly season, before I head up into the mountains for a fly for trout. Okay, so I'm switching to red. Now with the red, I'm just gonna go a couple and then I'm gonna tie in that weed guard. That nice and pushed back, nice and tight. We're about ready to put the weed guard in. So get that pushed back nice and tight. Okay, so we have the weed guard that was pulled through. We got it right here. I'm pushing it through the bottom part of the vise like I did earlier. So I got it right here. Remember how I said we're only gonna, we're gonna leave a nice distance between there? We don't wanna pull it tight. So I'm gonna go right about there with it. I'm gonna hold it on the bottom of the bug. And I'm gonna tie it in. Try and get this fly hair out of here. Tie them in. Tie them in nice too. 